जय जय श्री चैतन्य जय नित्यानंद जय द्वैत चंद्र जय गौर भक्त वृंद मातृप बिन कौनक क्रमे भक्ति नाय कृष्ण भक्ति दूर राहु संसार न है शाय Unless one is favored by a pure devotee, one cannot attain the platform of devotional service. To say nothing of Krishna Bhakti, one cannot even be relieved from the bondage of material existence. Pious activities bring about material opulence. One cannot acquire devotional service by any amount of material pious activity that by giving charity opening big hospitals or schools or working philanthropically devotional service can be attained only by the mercy of a pure devotee well pure devotee's mercy one cannot even escape the bondage of material existence the word mahat in this verse means a pure devotee as lord krishna confirms in gita Mahatmanas to Mambartam, Daivi Prakriti Asritaham, Bajadhyanayam, Hanaso, Yatva Bhutadim Avyayam. O son of Prita, those who are not deluded, the great souls, are under the protection of the divine nature. They are fully engaged in devotional service because they know me as a supreme person, now the Godhead, original and inexhaustible. One has to associate with such a Mahatma who has accepted Krishna as the supreme source of the entire creation. Without being a Mahatma, one cannot understand Krishna's absolute position. Mahatma is rare and transcendental, and he is a pure devotee of Lord Krishna. Foolish people consider Krishna a human being, and they consider Lord Krishna's pure devotee as an ordinary human being also. Whatever one may be, one may take shelter at the lotus feet of the devotee, Mahatma, and treat him as the most exalted well-wisher of all human society. We should take shelter of such a Mahatma and ask for his cause of mercy. Only by his benediction can he be, one can be relieved from attachment to materialistic way of life. When one is thus relieved, you can engage in the Lord's loving transcendental service through the mercy of the Mahatma. Om Gyan Timiranda Shyagana Janana Salakaya Chaksuran Milikam Yenatas Mari Shri Guruvena Maha Nama Om Vishnu Badai Krishna Prasaya Vitali Shri Bhakti Bhakti Vedanta Swami Timiranda Namaste, sirs, what did they say? Oh, I'm a vegetarian, you say, so soon, you are a step, yeah, they said, every day. When she got to the roof, this chair, keep a single pay, which have a tita, I know. Pavel, Pais, Louis, Joan, and Mahon, and Maha, Tice, Krishna, Chaitanya, Prabhu, and Sri Adwaita, Kedada, and her singers, and the poor, but the women. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hmm. So there are some preliminary, uh, one major preliminary principle which is being illustrated here. But Krishna is a hoaxaja. Maybe beyond the range of the senses. Material energy is, um, as Krishna says, Daivi Eshi Gunamaya Mamamaya Dharatyaya Mame Vaye Prapadyante Maya Eitan Tarantite. Material energy is very difficult to cross. Krishna is a hoaxaja. And the senses are imperfect. Mm -hmm. So with these three uh, deficiencies, 
especially Krishna being a hoaxer, beyond the range of the senses, mind and the intelligence. How can one engage in service to the Lord? It's not possible. And so therefore one must be favored by Krishna by being favored by his representative. And then one can begin the path of devotional service. Here it even mentions that one cannot even be relieved of the entanglement of material energy. As we mentioned, daibhyesha gunamayi mumamaya tarateya. Material energy consisting of the three modes of material nature is impossible to overcome by one's own endeavor. The Mahatmas, they have crossed over the ocean of material existence, but they send the boat back to the shore of material existence for others to get aboard. That same boat is still available. And so no one can, uh, can uh, approach the, the spiritual world unless one is favored by one who has that qualification. And so therefore it mentions tad vidi pratipate nam pravi pasyena seva yam pradeksyanti te gyanam gyanam tattva darshana. Krishna in the Bhagavad Gita speaks this verse himself that approaching me means approaching his pure devotee. And then there's three principles for that approach. Pratipatena, paripasyena, and sevaya. Pratipatena is to fall flat, to be humble. And paripasyena means to be inquisitive, and sevaya means to be ready to offer service. So this is the process. Approaching a spiritual master is not about you know getting your material arrangement fixed so you can have a better arrangement to enjoy the material world. Uh, material energy can't be fixed. It's what it is. It's mutable. It's always changing. You try to fix the material energy in one way, and it comes out the other way. It's almost like, how do you describe it? When you, uh, if you push on a pillow, one side, the other side becomes enlarged. You push on the other side, the other side becomes enlarged. So yeah, in the same way, the more we try to adjust the material energy, the more we get entangled in the material energy. So the spiritual master is not there to uh, help us have a better material situation. <laughs> He's there to get you out of that material situation or put you in a situation where you're on the path of getting out. <laughs> And he teaches you how to get on the path and how to get out. And without these three qualifications, humility, inquisitiveness, and seva, it's very difficult. Uh, some people, and of course Prabhupada speaks this a lot, when people approach the spiritual master for everything. Yeah. Now he talks about different kinds of spiritual master. That uh, you go to a spiritual master to relieve your physical deficiencies, re regain your health, 
or you go to a spiritual master to uh, somehow uh, find a better position in the material world. Uh, we will approach the spiritual master for many different reasons. Sometimes the spiritual master will give some material uh, advice as a foundation to help the person perform devotional service more effectively. In other words, if our material life is too, too tumultuous, too much turmoil, it becomes difficult for us to uh, practice devotional service. In fact, sometimes it becomes, it takes us away from devotional service. We spend more and most of our time trying to organize, organize the problems in material life. So sometimes the spiritual master give some advice, but in relationship to help one to make progress on devotional service. But in all cases, one has to be ready for service. That's the main thing. Sevaya, our service. Srila Prabhupada would say to uh, his spiritual master, he said, I never asked my spiritual master so many questions, but one question I did ask him is, how can I serve you? And that's the best question to ask, how can I serve you? <laughs> because that means, how can I serve Krishna? Or what is the best way I can engage in devotional service that will be beneficial for me to make advancement towards the path of pure devotional service? So we should be, in, one should be enthusiastic to serve. And one should be ready to accept the instructions that engages them in, in service. One should ask questions on the philosophical teachings mentioned in the scriptures for clarification and understanding, because some of the things that block our path in devotional service is that uh, misconceptions of the philosophical teachings and not knowing the relationship between the soul and Krishna, not knowing who one is, not knowing what is pure devotional service and what may look like pure devotional service, but is actually not. Mm -hmm. Well, so some of these questions are very important to understand to ask and get clarifications, and that way we move forward into in Krishna consciousness. So the spiritual master is there for two reasons. He gives philosophical knowledge of scripture, and he also gives practical understanding on how to engage in one's devotional service. And so this is essential. And that is the association. So the association with a pure devotee, spiritual master, is through the instructions. When um, Prabhupada's cook, back in the early days in the India, when Prabhupada was traveling with his Western disciples, that was Malati Devi. Um, she had been cooking for Prabhupada there. And then uh, one time she uh, had, to, had to leave the association of Prabhupada for an extended period of time. So she actually wrote a letter after some time explaining how much she missed the association and the service of Srila Prabhupada. And Prabhupada wrote back, yeah. And he acknowledged her, her devotional sentiments. But he said, you should understand that the spiritual master is not the body. He is the principle of service. So if you're engaged in devotional service, 
and you are connected with the spiritual master through that instruction of devotional service. So devotional service transcends physical proximity. And we see that even persons who are in the association with the spiritual master, but do not have a service attitude, or not interested in gaining directions in their service, are not connected, but those may be thousands of miles away who have received the instructions and are working to fulfill those instructions, they are associated. This is spiritual association. As Prabhupada used to say, you are chanting Hare Krishna, I am chanting Hare Krishna, therefore we are together. <laughs> so from the spiritual perspective, um, one is associating through the activities of devotional service. And the more one's enthusiastic and the more one is engaged in these activities, the more one can feel the association of the spiritual master. The spiritual masters, um, one very senior devotee, said to Prabhupada, um, he had, said he had a dream one night, and in the dream he saw Krishna giving instructions to Arjuna. And then he saw Krishna turn into Srila Prabhupada and himself turning into, and Arjuna turning into himself. And he related that dream to Prabhupada. Prabhupada said, yes, that is very nice. <laughs> So this is our connection. It's the only connection like that is devotional service. Because devotional service is transcendental to the three modes of material nature and has it is not under the influence of anything material. It's always transcendental. Yeah. Uh, and this is the service of the spiritual master to connect the conditioned living entity with Krishna by engaging him in devotional service. That is the connection. Okay, why don't we go to the next verse? Fifty-two. Ragu Ganaita Tapasyana Yatri Nacheya Yanirva Panagrihadva Nachanda Sanaiva Jalatni Suryair Vina Mahat Padma Rajo Bishakam. So this verse is from Srimad Bhagavatam 5 12 12. O King Rahugana. Without taking upon one's head the dust of the lotus feet of a pure devotee, Mahajana Mahatma, one cannot attain devotional service. Devotional service is not possible to attain simply by undergoing severe austerities and penances, by gorgeously worshiping the deity, or by strictly following the rules and regulations of the sannyasa grihasthora. Nor is attained by studying the Vedas, submerging oneself in water, or exposing oneself to fire or scorching sunlight. Hmm. Zebarat here and tells King Rahugana how he attained the Paramahansa stage. Maharaj Rahugana, the king of Sindhu Salvira, had asked Zebarat how he attained the Paramahansa stage. The king had called him to carry his palanquin. When the king heard from Paramahansa Jadbarat about the supreme philosophy, he expressed surprise and asked Jadbarat how he attained such great liberation. At that time, Jadbarat informed the king how to become detached from material attraction. So this verse illustrates the same point 
by giving us more of a clear and detailed understanding that devotional service is not attained any other way except by the mercy of a pure devotee. Without the mercy of the pure devotee, all of these things mentioned here, plus a many, many other activities that are spiritual, uh, cannot bring one to platform of devotional service. They can purify one a little bit from material attachments which awakens one's desire for devotional service. But unless one comes to the next stage, and that is seeking out a bona fide spiritual master. So one should actively seek out a spiritual master. Uh, just like, I mean, when we look at it from a, a practical point of view, you see any great science you need to learn it from a teacher. You may read books and get some idea, but when you have a teacher, then the science becomes easily learnable. And then you can ask your questions and get your clarifications and move forward. So spiritual life is a very subtle science. It's not seeable by practical empirical vision. It is beyond the range of the senses, minds, and intelligence. So one cannot approach to that realm unless one takes shelter of one who is situated in that realm of devotional service, fully situated. And that is the here, the, the, the dust of the lotus feet of a pure devotee. Uh, this indicates here, said, without taking upon one's head, this indicates humility. Again, approaching a pure devotee for anything else is not taking the dust of his lotus feet. Only when one is sincere, sincere about making solutions to the, to the problems of life, then one can approach with humility as expressed here. So King Rahugana is a little bit surprised and he can't understand how this palaquin carrier has so much spiritual knowledge. So he wants to know. Uh, uh, King Rahugana is being given some preliminary understanding. Jad Bharat will go on and explaining what, what is the qualification for that this next verse, verse number 53, is a verse spoken by Prahlad Maharaj. Naisam Matis Tava Urukraman Gri Sprishatyanartha Padano Yanartha Unless human society accepts the dust of the lotus feet of the great Mahatma's devotees, who have nothing to do with material possessions, mankind cannot turn its attention to the lotus feet of Krishna. Those lotus feet vanquish all unwanted, miserable conditions of material life. 7523, when the great site Nara was given instructions to Maharaj Yudhishthir, he narrated the activities of Pallad Maharaj. This verse was spoken by Pallad Maharaj to his father, Karani Kasiputa, king of the demons. Pallad Maharaj informed his father of the nine basic processes of devotional bhakti yoga, explaining that whoever takes to these possesses is to be considered, processes is to be considered a highly learned scholar. Arani Kashipu, however, did not like his son to talk about devotional service. So he called his teacher's son in America. The teacher explained that he had not taught devotional service to Prahlad, but the boy was naturally inclined in this way. Arani Kashipu was angry and asked why he became a Vaishnava. 
Prahlad Maharaj said to the fact that one cannot become a devotee unless one receives the mercy and blessings of another devotee. So these verses are confirmations by great souls of the principle that there's no way one can enter into or be free from the entanglement of material energy, enter into devotional service without the uh, mercy and association of the pure devotee. Text 54. Sadhu Sangha, Sadhu Sangha, Sarva Shastri Khoi, Lava Matta Sadhu Sangha, Sarva Siddhi Hoi. The verdict of all revealed scriptures that even by a moment's association with a pure devotee, one can attain all success. According to astronomical calculations, a lava is one eleventh of a second. Lava Matta, as mentioned, Lava Matra. One eleventh a second association with a sadhu, uh, one can attain all success. So, what is that one eleventh? Just to clarify that, in the practical sense, that question was asked to Srila Prabhupada by his disciples who had been associated with Prabhupada continuously, and they presented their situation that Srila Prabhupada, we have been associating with you for many, many years. We are not purified yet. So what does this verse mean? And Prabhupada answered in a very interesting way by using an example. He said, if you want to light the fire and the wood is wet, it will not ignite. Just try, if you try to light wet wood, you have to first dry it out. And then once it's dry, it immediately bursts into flames. So similarly, in the association of a pure devotee, one has to continually hear the message given by the pure devotee. And at one point, the drying process will be reached. So sometimes devotees get discouraged. No, just stay in that association and keep on hearing, continue to serve, continue to inquire how to make advancement. Then at one point, this verse becomes realized like that, that Lava Mantra manifests itself because that moment's association with a pure devotee means that one has reached the level of that association. As we said here, the physical proximity with the pure devotee does not necessarily mean association. It is the consciousness that one develops in that association that brings one to the stage of a purified receptivity. In other words, when one is completely receptive and engaged in devotional service, then that Lava Mantra becomes manifested. In other words, one has reached purification. Well, it's a very subtle science and you can see from these verses how it works. So this association is not something that is easily attainable one gets the association of a great soul after many verses. There's one verse that mentions that in every verse, one gets a mother and a father. No matter what birth that is, it could be a dog, it could be an insect, bird, beast, human. So there's mothers and there's fathers in every life we have. But how rare it is to get the association and the opportunity to serve a pure devotee. So that's rare. And taking advantage of that means that's one's good fortune. Our good fortune is not simply gaining material success, having a better, having a nice family, or having a good job, 
and having a very qualified and beautiful wife, having a very uh, qualified and very uh, protective type of husband. None of these things are really any success in material life. In fact, sometimes these things lead away from devotional service because they're seen as success. Real success is to engage in devotional service because that is our nature. When we engage in devotional service under the guidance of the pure devotee, we are protected from the, from the material energy. And at the same time, we are elevated by that activity, elevated towards Krishna. And Krishna puts a lot of emphasis on this principle. He says, those who say they are my devotee are not my devotee, but those who say they are devotee of my devotee are actually my devotee. And so he makes the point that the pure devotee, one who associates and serves him, is actually associating and serving me. Otherwise, if they try separately, there is no connection. <laughs> okay, so let's see, what do we have here for time? Yeah, so we uh, can stop here and then see, we can go to the gallery and uh, everybody can come on and turn on your videos and ask questions, comments, present doubts, like that. So Kava, send me your phone number. I couldn't reach you because I didn't have your phone number. Malak, I messaged you. Did you uh, not see my message? Uh, on my WhatsApp? Yeah. Let me see. Uh, let me see. Mm. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I got it now. Okay. 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 Well, best answers to you, Guru Maharaj. Okay. okay, so we only have Less than, we have 40% of the devotees with their cameras on. The other 60% are still unmanifested. Hmm. We get one more, we're up to 50%. Here we go. 50, okay, we're climbing. Certain people I know will never turn on their camera. Even if I come to their house and knock on their door and tell them to do it, they still won't turn it on. <laughs> okay. Questions? Comments? Raj Prabhu, please go ahead, Mahaprabhu. Thank you, Mr. Jin. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. All glories to you, Maharaj. Glories um, to Srila Prabhupada. Thank Very you good. for that wonderful class. Uh, learned lots of new things today. You're talking about association, and uh, we know that we're always instructed, advised, encouraged to take good association, to take higher association. But now I'm wondering, what actually does association mean? And how do you take association? Hmm. Good question. What does association mean? Well, you associate Association really means developing an att attraction for the object of association. And how to take association is different from different types of 
relationships. The Bhagavatam explains that there are devotees who are in better, higher positions, devotees who are equal, and devotees who are in less positions. So these three categories of association, the, 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 the details for that association are variable. For those who are more advanced, we try to serve them and we um, hear from them. Hearing and serving. For those who are equal, we make friends and share Krishna consciousness. For those who are in a lesser position, we become compassionate to them and try to raise them up in different ways so they can make advancement in devotional service. So this is three ways to associate with three levels of relationships. And then attraction and attachment for that association. Uh, if you're in, just like Prabhupada would use the example, a flea could be sitting on a king and both the flea and the king are sitting on the throne. But the, the flea has nothing to do with the king nor to the throne. So what is the relationship between the throne and the flea and the throne and the, and the, the flea and the king? Nothing. So that's physical proximity. So there has to be some, some congruency in that association, some meaning for that association, some reason for that association. So the reason for the association is to increase one's devotional service or to help others increase their devotional service or to somehow or other communicate and share transcendental knowledge. And so if you go to the verse, fourth canto, eighth chapter, verse number 34, in that verse, you'll you know, illustrates what I just mentioned. You can bring that up, Runda, 4, 8, 34, Srimad Bhagavatam. Yeah. Every man should act that when he meets a person more qualified than himself, he should be very pleased. When he meets someone less qualified, he should then himself he should be compassionate when he meets one someone equal to me he should make friendship with him in this way one is never affected by the three form miseries of material energy so then Prabhupada gives the same points in the purport and then he talks about that if your association with someone who's more advanced and you feel envious towards him then you're you're not associating if you're associating with people who are on an equal letter, level and you become proud of your own activities by telling them how wonderful you are and such a great friend that they have. And if you deride people who are in the lower position, then these, these nullify these three relationships. So here it tells you how to associate like that. Okay. Thank you, Maharaj. Mm -hmm. And there are, there are other verses in the Bhagavatam and in other places in the Shastras, which illustrates association because it's one of the main topics in devotional service. So become eager for association and then develop the right mood in that association. The mood is always service, but the service plays itself out in three different ways. 
as mentioned in that verse. Depending on the relationship with the different individuals. You go to the store and you meet the man who is the proprietor. You pick up your item, you give him some money, and then you take your item and he takes your money. That's not an association. <laughs> Although you might be talking to him and interacting with him, still there's no, it's not really association. Association is affection for. So we develop affection for uh, the process of devotional service and we associate accordingly, according to different levels of relationships. Mm -hmm. The seniors, you hear and look for opportunities to serve. For equals, you serve and share Krishna consciousness together. For those in a lesser position, you become compassionate to them and think of ways to help them advance. That's it. <laughs> Maharaj, what do we do if we don't know the level of the devotee or devotees that we are uh, engaging with? We may not know them very well. Uh, always be in the mood of, of service. Yeah. When, you're, when you're with someone, you can think, what can I do in that relationship? To enhance that relationship. So that's a mood of service. Mm -hmm. Like sometimes just listening to someone who wants to speak about devotional service is a way to serve that person. It takes a little bit of a discrimination to understand who, who you're with and how best to serve. Mm -hmm. A parent will be with a child, and sometimes a parent will have to reprimand the child. But that's necessary for the child, so that's service to the child. Thank you, Maharaj. Hare Krishna, I see you're in good association. Jagannath Baladev Subhadra Maharani Ki Jai. Soho Street Temple Ki Jai. Okay, so any other comments and questions? Uh, so this is like getting association is like maybe going to like temple or like home program. So this is like maybe best thing to do maybe to we can get maybe take the association, their association and we can give over association. So going to like temple and maybe. Yeah, that's the reason why we go. We go for the association. But now, nowadays people I hardly see like going, coming temple, you know, sometimes. So how today will get in the, <clears throat> it's kind of a, like, even like once a month, if they come to temple, they will probably get something, maybe a certain devotee, but now they don't, sometimes I don't see people. <clears throat> well, there's those who come to the temple just to, because they feel like they, it's an obligation to go to the temple and they go and then they leave, that's all. Mm -hmm. They get very little out of that. Well, they gain something. The deity is there, Prabhupada is there. Mm. But if they get prashadam or hear a class or get to talk to the devotees, then that is more that is more beneficial. Mm -hmm. 
So just like if you walk into the temple and there's nobody in the temple with Prabhupada and the deities there, you'll pay your obeisances, you might offer a few prayers, but then you'll think, where's the devotees? <laughs> We are, we are, um, by nature, our nature is to find that association in our life that will make us happy, that will uplift us. That's true in material life, spiritual life. It's always there. It's all about association. Because the whole principle of, the, of life is to exchange with another living entity. Those who don't associate with anyone, of course, that's not possible, but uh, there are those who uh, avoid association with anyone. They are either Paramahansas who are on the highest level who are associating with Krishna within the heart or there's simply, or there's simply persons who um, don't have any understanding of how to live life, can't associate with anyone, don't want to associate, and then they remain, they remain incomplete in their, in their, in their life. They never feel real happiness. Happiness means to be with others who are of yeah. the same, same mindset. If you're with people who are not of the same mindset or the opposite mindset, although you're apparently association, you're not so you're not happy because you're not, you know, they're not on the same level. So therefore, we have to associate with devotees. Mm -hmm. Or if we associate with the non-devotees, we have to give them our association in the form of giving them Krishna consciousness. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's like you're running your little Uber car. So you meet people all the time. And so uh, you give them a book, you tell them about Krishna, you tell them about chanting Hare Krishna. So they're getting your association because you're a devotee. Yeah. yeah, but you're not taking their association. You're giving them your association. Yeah. When, you, when you're in with devotees, then you're giving association and taking association. That's different. Thank you. Thank you, Krishna. I hope. Hare Krishna, Maharaj. Thank you so much for today's session, Maharaj. Uh, I have questions. Uh, in the verse which we read in Bhagavatam uh, 4 8 34, in that in the, it's mentioned that uh, to be compassionate for less qualified. Uh, people. So how, how do we consider one as less qualified, Maharaj? Those who don't have, do, those who are not on the path of devotional service. Okay. Or those who you maybe can come, come brand new into Krishna consciousness and are looking to learn, looking to uh, experience. So then and for those, we more like we present ourselves as someone who can assist them. Mm. Okay. Less qualified simply means the non devotees. That's what it really means. Mm -hmm. Okay. Also, Maharaj, you gave an example of a pillow. Like how we, uh, the more we push the pillow from one side, the more it gets puffed from the other side. So it means that the uh, more we try to adjust material energy, the more we get entangled into it. So what is what is mean by adjusting material energy, Maharaj? I did not get that. Like, can you please yeah. give a practical example? Just trying to manipulate the material energy to make it work according to your desires. That's all. 
<laughs> this yeah. that's going on in as life in the material world goes on every minute. People are always adjusting, adjusting this, adjusting that, adjusting relationships, adjusting the way they develop relationships, adjusting their location, adjusting, adjusting, adjusting. <laughs> They're trying to find some happiness in that adjustment. Mm, okay. But material energy is mutable. That means it's changeable. So the more the more you change, it's also changing. You can't control the material energy because it's controlled by Krishna. Krishna says, Daiviyesha Gunamai, it's my energy. I control it. If you want to, if you want material energy to work according to your uh ideas and you have to take shelter of Krishna and he can control the material energy. Mm. Not you. <laughs> you have some control. Prabhupada said everyone has some control. The, the father has some control over the, the family. The mother can, has control over the household. Uh, you know, a guru has some control over the disciples. A teacher has control over the students. There's some control there, but it's done for the benefit of others. But I, what, we're, what we're talking about is the control in order to enjoy the material energy. Mm -hmm. That kind of control you can't, you can't get anything out of because the more you try to enjoy through the principle of controlling, the more you get entangled in that energy. <laughs> You think, I'm going to enjoy this way. So you go out and try to enjoy it. And then uh, you get some experience of enjoyment. And then there's a reaction to that. Mm. Or the enjoyment leaves you after a few seconds or a few moments. And then you're again trying to, again, look for enjoyment in the same, same process. So if you want to enjoy, Sir, <laughs> yeah. thank you, Maharaj. Thank you very much. Okay, yeah. Namrata Mataji has raised hand. Mataji, please. Oh, Namrata Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisance. He's all glorious to Shri Guru. Uh, Maharaj, uh, just a follow-up question. Uh, I wanted to ask how, if, if there are uh, people around us who has controlling tendencies, then how do we as a devotee we deal with them? The control for Krishna. <laughs> the demigods, they are demigods because they have a very strong controlling propensity. But they're, they're the great devotees of the Lord at the same time. But they have this, they're called Sakama devotees. They want to be a devotee, but they also want to be in control at the same time. So that's demigod mentality. So they have devotion to Krishna, but they have this desire to control the material energy. So Krishna gives them facility in through, this, through serving him by managing the material affairs. So they have big responsibilities to manage the material affairs. So you can control for Krishna. Yeah. So maybe seek out a service that give you that gives you some control and offer that activity and devotion to Krishna like that. So there's people like, well, I want to be temple president. Okay. So there's some controlling propensity in there. Okay. So you get that proof. But then become the best temple president and serve the devotees in that mood of control, and that becomes your success. So control for Krishna, but don't control. Don't control simply to somehow uh, arrange the material energy to to suit your desire to enjoy. That's the difference. Control for Krishna. Mm -hmm. Uh, I think, Maharaj, uh, I'll repeat my question. If people around us have controlling tendencies over us, 
Oh, then that's a problem. <laughs> then how do we deal as a devotee? Well, sometimes you let people control you in order to facilitate your own desires. But then again, if, it, if that controlling propensity over you is detrimental in any way, then um, you, you, don't, you have a choice whether to let them control you or not. And if it's detrimental to you, it's detrimental to them also. Because if they're going to try to control you, it should be for your benefit, not for your detriment. <laughs> so if they're causing you distress and through that control, that will cause them to go down also. And they will commit offenses or they'll make mistakes. Or they'll be in the wrong mindset. So, yeah. So we let the spiritual master control us. So we let the authorities in, the, in Krishna consciousness control us because their propensity is to engage us through that control in Krishna's service. Yeah. But for the materialists, if someone is controlling, trying to control you for their own gain, then, uh, but if you see they're trying to control you for your benefit, and you see the benefit in their control, then you may accept that. Mm -hmm. You have to decide, is it, are you gaining from that control or are you not? Thank you, Maharaj. Mm, does that help? Yeah, it does help. But I think practice would make uh, things more clear, I guess. The thing is, we are always controlled. We cannot be in a situation where we're always controlled. Through the spiritual energy or through the material energy, we're always in a position of control being controlled so you have to be under that energy that controls you so you can grow from that control not go down from that control and that's true materially and spiritually also but spiritually uh, we want to be controlled by krishna just like sometimes a disciple will come my dear spiritual master you know i can't do anything <laughs> I've tried. Please guide me, engage me, control me so I don't try to control myself because I can't do it. <laughs> so we get that sometimes too. And that's, that's, that's humility and that's intelligence. When you get tired of controlling yourself, you give, you give that control to Krishna, you give that control to Krishna's representative. I think clarifies quite more. <laughs> okay, thank you. Thank you, Maharaj. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Madame Gopal, was that your wife that peeked in there for a minute? Yes, good Maharaj. My obeisance is to you, I'll go as Prabhupada. Hare Krishna. Have any go questions? Um, I mean, it's just hard to ask questions, but I, uh, everything you say, I, I feel like you're speaking right to me. I am. Hare <laughs> Krishna. <laughs> it's always like the perfect timing, you know, spiritual master, it's such a connection, you know, with Krishna and the disciple. Krishna is always working to help the devotee. And therefore, he uses different living entities to assist in him helping the devotee. 
Sometimes he, use, he uses the spiritual master to help us. He uses material energy to help us. He uses people around us to help us. That's Krishna. If we see that, Haribo Mataji, Hare Krishna. Uh, if we see that, then we are actually in the position to make advancement. Yes. Oh, Haribo. <laughs> Nice to see both of you together, Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Uji, nice. I'm terrible with names. Say your name. Oh, Golokeshwari Gayatri Devi Dasi. Golokeshwari, Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, Maharaj. Good to see you both together. And that's a very rare thing for me. <laughs> <laughs> for anyone, <laughs> for anyone. <laughs> okay. Thank you, Gomaj. Thank you. <laughs> Any more? Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Okay. Do we have any more comments? No, I don't see any question or raised hand, Maharaj. No more? Okay. Okay. If, uh, Kalakanti has written something. All right. Now, tomorrow is a special class. Uh, I don't know if you received the information, but we sent it out that... Uh, It'll be at two o'clock UK time, which is two hours earlier than our normal time. And we'll be connecting to a group in the UK <laughs> and talking about uh, Radha Govinda. Uh, and we'll be speaking about the Lord and his deity form as Radha Govinda. So that'll start at 2 UK time and it'll, it'll extend to 3.30 UK time. It'll be an hour and a half class. So make a note of that. This time tomorrow will not be the regular time, but two hours earlier. So that's 2 o'clock UK time. Does that work for you, Madan? Yes, Guru Maharaj. Thank you. Okay, that's... What time is that for you? Uh, I think it'll be 6 a.m. if it's two hours earlier. Okay, 6 a.m. Okay. okay, so thank you very much. And it's so nice to see all the devotees, my obeisances to everyone. Hare Krishna. And we'll uh, see you soon. Merry Christmas. <laughs> Hare Krishna. Thank you. Thank you so much, Maharaj, for your time and association. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Thank you very much. Hare Krishna. 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 Hare Okay, Maharaj, I'm waiting. Okay. Thank you. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. All glory to Srila Prabhupada. Jai Ho. Hare Krishna. Maharaj. Yeah. Kalakanti Mataji has mentioned that it is her birthday today. So if everyone is. Okay. Everybody wish her best wishes on her birthday. She is a wonderful lady from UK. She's a cook. She's, uh, she's actually a disciple of Bhakti Charu Maharaj. 
And we gave her a second initiation just about three or four months ago. So she loves to cook and she cooks for Sri Sri Radha Kulananda and the devotees in the UK. It is tomorrow, Mara. She mentioned it's tomorrow, not today. Tomorrow. Oh, that's even more exciting. <laughs> Hare Krishna. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you, devotees, for joining. Hare Krishna. Thank you, Mataji. Thank you. Thank you, Mataji. Hare Krishna.